What's going on? My name is Robert and you are watching Southpaw Auto Works. In this video, we talk about lights, specifically fluorescent lights. Uh, I've used uh, T8 fluorescent light bulbs for a number of years on the ceiling. Uh, not all that long ago, I replaced all the bulbs as a number of them were either burned out or they were flickering and ready to burn out. Unfortunately, it wasn't all that long after replacing the bulbs that more bulbs started burning out. Anybody that knows anything about fluorescent light bulbs understands that this is a problem and uh, that it's most likely related to the ballast. So you can't just replace the bulbs. Uh, as these light fixtures age, you gotta not only replace the bulbs, but you need to replace the ballast. Needless to say, I'm getting tired of monkeying around with these light bulbs. So uh, I tried to figure out a solution. Um, I knew that I could you know, go to the local parts house and get ballast and replace those, but I'm like, A, how much is that gonna cost? And B, how much time is it gonna cost? And C, most importantly, how long is it gonna be before I have this problem all over again? which I really don't care to have. A quick search on the internet shows that there's a ton of different ways that you can outfit your garage or your workshop or your workspace with LED lighting. Whether you uh, buy LED uh, light strips or, or buy your own LED light fixtures or uh, do what I'm doing and retrofitting my uh, fluorescent light fixtures into LED light fixtures. I came across these really cool light bulbs that look like fluorescent light bulbs, but they're actually LED strips inside of them. These are the Pro LED light bulbs manufactured by Halco Lighting Technologies. You can buy the bulbs in a two pack or a 10 pack. So I decided to buy them by the case to save money because I was gonna end up needing that many bulbs anyways. Um, there is a little bit of time and work involved, but uh, this is a way to save some money. And uh, I'm really, really pleased with the uh, with the outcome of this project. I'll quickly share what's involved with converting one of these light fixtures from fluorescent over to LED to accept these Halco LED light bulbs. Before we dive into the next segment of this video, there's a few things that I need to cover with you. First and foremost, I am not, not an electrician. I am not an electrician. Two, this video is not to be used as a substitute for the instructions provided by the manufacturer. In this next segment, I'm gonna document and share the steps that I went through in order to retrofit these lights from fluorescent over to LED. However, that information is not to be used as a substitute for the instructions. I'm gonna provide a link in the video description down below for you where you can find the product online and that product listing features a PDF of the instructions as well as a short video tutorial on uh, how to perform this task. Three, if you don't feel comfortable doing electrical repairs, please do not do them yourself. Instead, hire a qualified professional. In other words, a licensed electrician. Performing these kind of electrical repairs or in this case, a retrofit, um, there's you know, ways to get it done correctly, but there's a whole lot of different ways to do it wrong, and doing it wrong can result in bodily harm. You could get shocked. That shock could result in pain and or death. Also, faulty wiring can result in a fire, which could burn your garage, your home, whatever your workspace is, it could catch on fire and burn to the ground. If you're new to electricity and you're wanting to learn more about the basics, which can really, really go a long ways, I highly recommend this book, Wiring Simplified. This book is based on the 2014 National Electric Code. Granted, we're in the year 2021. Speaking of that electrical code, you can also buy online the National Electric Code and get the most current year. Um, this book's really quite inexpensive and it covers a lot of the basics, um, but I'd recommend getting this book and that National Electric Code Armed with that knowledge, you're gonna put yourself in a lot better spot to avoid the dangers of electricity. So, take your light fixture. Obviously make sure it's unplugged and uh, start disassembling the panel. There's a screw right here and one down here at the other end. Put 
screws out of the way, you can pull this cover off. Well, in theory, anyways. And then with the cover out of the way, you can see the ballast right here. And it's just a matter of cutting all the wires that are coming out of the ballast real closely to the ballast, like so. So you don't want to cut these white wires or this long black wire just yet. But let's start cutting the rest of these real quick. I'll cut this black wire close to the ballast. That's your line voltage coming in. More on that in a second. That guy. Might feel a little odd to open something up and start cutting wires like this, but. With the wires cut, remove the ballast. There's a uh, nut right here. And of course the Phillips on the other side. I'll hold the Phillips, back the nut off. It was held in by these two. Set those aside. Ballast is held in with uh, that nut and that screw. And then it just kind of slides in place on the other side. So you just got to wiggle it out and up and out the ballast comes. Now we got that out of the way, we can just tend to the wiring. This style of fixture is powered by this uh, extension cord type plug. Got three prongs on it. These type of plugs are comprised of three wires, which is real common for uh, most of your home's electrical wiring. Those three wires are comprised of a, a green wire or sometimes bare. This is ground. You wanna make sure that's uh, secured to the metal housing. Ground is important because if the ground isn't in place and this electrical, uh, any of this electrical housing becomes energized, uh, also known as a short circuit, uh, this can become electrified and it won't trip the breaker if the ground isn't in place, meaning this could electrocute you. However, if the ground's hooked up and this gets energized, the breaker trips immediately and uh, nobody can get hurt that way. Um, at any rate, three wires, green one is ground, uh, the white one that hooks up to the white wire here is what's called a neutral. And the black wire is your line or your voltage, 120 volts roughly. But uh, how this gets wired is, is it doesn't matter if you run the line to this side of the sockets or if you run it over to the other end, over to the other uh, side of the bulbs. So um, you can wire it either way. I've yet to cut the neutral wire because it's running over to the other end of the, uh, the other sockets. You've got your, your uh, light bulb sockets on this end of the fixture and then identical ones at the other end, but the, the wiring at each end is different. But uh, all the other fixtures I've done, which is, this is gonna be the 10th one. None of them have been wired this way, which is kind of odd, but uh, there's been, I don't know, this is the third different wiring I've seen inside uh, these light fixtures. But at any rate, I'm just gonna cut it, I guess right about here. And that way we've got uh, the black wire's power coming in and the white wire is uh, the ground basically for that power. They call it a neutral, but it goes back to the electrical panel. Um, but you gotta have a way for power to come in and a way for power to go out after it's gone through the load, which in this case is the light bulb, is the load. But uh, so the next step is we're gonna start stripping wires. We gotta expose bare copper at the end of each one of these wires that we've cut. So we've got a number of those to do. So let's get on that. So per the instructions, and please do not watch this video and not refer to the instructions. If you're gonna uh, retrofit your fluorescent light bulb and use this particular kit, use the instructions. And there is a video on that as well, which is real straight to the point. Um, per those instructions, we can run power to one side or the other. And uh, I'm gonna choose to run the, uh, the black wire, which is the line, the voltage, to, uh, to this side of the light fixture to power these two light sockets. And then I will run the uh, white wire, which is the neutral wire, over to the opposite end of the light fixture. It doesn't matter which way you do that. I could run the white wire here and the black wire over there, but this is just what I'm choosing to do. And you can make that choice when the time comes. 
So here's my two sockets that would normally live right here. I've got my wires cut and stripped. They're not the same length of wire. You could cut them all the same length if you want it to look nice or whatever, but these can get tucked in here and nobody's ever gonna see it. So this will work. I'm not too worried about it. So what you do is we're gonna take these four wires and wrap them together. And in addition to that, we're also gonna take the black wire. So we're gonna have a total of five wires in here. We're gonna wrap all those together. So now I'm bending wires to get them all to the same length. This is where uh, taking the time to cut them to the same length can really save you some headache, but I'm not that smart. So here we go. I've got all my wires grouped together. Trying to line up the uh, insulation here at my thumb. I'm gonna take them over here and use the edge of the bench and uh, use that as, as a vise or a hand. I'm gonna grab these line pliers here and just twist. And I'm twisting clockwise because the wire nut that's gonna ultimately hold these together, it screws on clockwise. And if you screw uh, these, or if you wrap these um, copper wires in the opposite direction, they're gonna unravel when you go to tighten the wire nut on here, and that's not good. So I just kinda gently squeeze, rotate, and pull at the same time to get something that looks like that. So with this current setup, we've got you know our two light sockets are wired together now, and the black wire, which is the voltage, it's wired together. Our whole wrap here is a little bit too long for a wire nut. If you don't know what a wire nut looks like, this is a wire nut. On the inside, it's got uh, threads. At any rate, it's probably a little bit too long, gonna leave metal exposed, so I'm gonna cut a little bit of the end off here just to make sure the nut covers all of the bare wire so we don't have a short. Tighten this on here in a clockwise manner. And there you have it. When this thing gets plugged in, we're gonna now have voltage running to both of these sockets, which are gonna uh, run juice into one end of the uh, light tubes or light bulbs. Now we're gonna work on the other end. It's the same thing, rinse and repeat, but the other side, we're gonna wrap all the wires together and instead of running the black wire to them, we're gonna run the white wire. But you will notice this white wire now won't reach, at least not easily when those are hooked in. It's not gonna reach. There's uh, a shortage there, if you will. So what I'm gonna do is take some of this blue wire or any wire I can get that's of suitable size and I'll, I'll wire nut this together and that together and that'll uh, extend the length of this wire so I can reach uh, this other bundle of wires. So that's the one extra step involved there, but nothing major, real, real simple and real easy. All right, so I'm gonna add my, my blue wire to my white wire here just to make it longer. Just set them side by side. I just twist them. Try to get them to line up so the copper wraps over copper, like so. Again, pliers, gently squeeze, rotate in the correct direction and pull. Grab a wire nut. And actually this isn't a lot of wire there, so I'm gonna grab, I've got some other wire nuts that are uh, smaller that may work better for this, because you don't want the wire slipping out of there and falling out of the wire nut, because you'll do one of two things. You're gonna lose power to your light bulbs, which won't be fun, because the whole point of this process is to not have light bulb problems in your workspace. These are a uh, different kind of wire nut, just for smaller gauge wire. Since we're using two smaller gauge wires, this should work pretty good for us. All right, that makes that end good. Get this bundle tightened up. Cut off the excess, maybe right about there. This time I'll use a yellow wire nut because we got like four wires going into this. And again, tighten it on there in a clockwise manner. Alrighty. 
Now we've got a uh, black wire here, black wire here coming out of the extension cord, if you will, or the plug, black wire coming in, and it's running juice to both of these sockets on the right. And then the white wire, the remaining white wire here, runs over to a blue wire, which I know I'm gonna probably get blasted for doing that by some electrician. Probably shouldn't do that, probably should have been a white wire, but like I said, um, white wire, which is the neutral, comes in, provides a path back to the breaker panel for the other sockets that are down at this end. So now that uh, we've examined all of our connections, we know that our, our ground looks good and it's, it's tight. It's tight. Now that we know all of our connections are the way they're supposed to be, is a good practice to take some electrical tape and wrap each one of these wire nuts just to make sure that and you don't have uh, a short to ground and uh, nothing can get up inside of there and cause a problem. So I wrap the wire nut with electrical tape to look something like so. Rinse and repeat with the remaining wire nuts. Now that all the electrical has been addressed, take your sockets and slide them back into position on the uh, metal housing of the electrical fixture. You're gonna notice the uh, wires here are wanting to fight me. So you just gotta bend them into submission. They'll do what you want them to do. And then repeat on the other side. So here is the right side, or at least my right, of the uh, light fixture with the electrical sockets um, engaged with the uh, lighting fixture frame. The wires bent up in a way that uh, makes them behave a little better. We follow the white wire, which ends up turning into a blue wire, which feeds uh, into that nut. And those wires come down to these sockets. So now that we've got all that organized, uh, we're now ready to reinstall the cover. And I noticed this thing's a little bit of a snug fit trying to get uh, this cover on over these sockets, at least on this particular style, which I believe is an older style light fixture. I've got um, a newer style. A lot of them that I installed were newer style and they were a lot easier than this. A lot less wiring to mess with. But uh, probably good we had this one on the video just because I'm thinking it's kind of like a worst case scenario as far as converting a fluorescent. And uh, as you can see, it's really not all that bad to do. I'm talking just minutes of your time. Next, we just install the bulbs. You've got a label on one side of the bulb. Just want to obviously orient it with the label. Uh, facing up towards the light fixture so it's not blocking your light. Put that in there and rotate 90 degrees till it clicks. Oh, yeah, this fixture. Like I said, it's old and Everything on here is a little more difficult to do just, I think, because of the age of it. But uh, it's doable. It just takes a little extra finessing to get everything to rotate the way it should. <sighs> Boom, and that leaves us just with the test here. Take our plug and get it plugged in. And boom, we've got light, people. I do want to stress that I am not an electrician. 
I mean, I think that's pretty obvious watching me work with this stuff that I'm not an electrician. All I'm saying is uh, do this at your own risk and be extremely careful while you work because uh, if you do something wrong with electricity, you can, you will definitely get hurt and you could get killed and you could cause damage to your workshop or your home or whatever, you know, you could create a fire. So uh, be extremely careful. But uh, I do think this is a doable task for a lot of people and uh, it's a way to save a chunk of money and uh, have a little bit of fun doing it. So uh, yeah. As you can see, this retrofit is pretty easy. Doesn't require a lot of tools or a lot of technical know-how regarding electricity. Of course, you gotta be safe. If you don't feel comfortable doing this sort of thing, please don't. But uh, at any rate, just wanted to share my frustration with the lights I had in here previously. Um, just pretty annoying to have lights flickering, especially when you're trying to film. But at any rate, I know I'm not the only one that has this frustration. There's gotta be a bunch of you out there that are uh, encountering this right now, or you'll catch this video at a later date. And uh, hopefully this will help save you some headache. If you're interested in the products featured in this video, they are linked in the video description down below. And uh, that is a way to get products that you need and or want and support the Southpaw Auto Works YouTube channel at the same time at no additional cost to you. So uh, thanks for checking those out. Thanks for joining me. And uh, I will catch you in the next video.